Thank mm-hmm. you. 
children of Israel when they were walking in the desert. Yeah, they walked around out there because they didn't know the direction. That's the problem that we have with most of our younger people today. If they didn't have their computer or they didn't have, if they didn't have groceries in a box that they could stick in a microwave, they would go hungry. You know, the thing about it is, and it gets worse every day. We laughed. Mikey must say, we laughed about someone had built an outside john that they had for sale at the auction. We might laugh about that. But the thing being is, most kids would ask, what in the world is that? But if I had to go back, I'd know what it was for. Amen. It's the thing. The biggest problem that we have with this country is we're so spoiled and everything is given to us so much. It's the thing. Yeah, groceries is very high. Very high. But you know what? My wife still knows how to grow a garden. That's the thing, you know, sometimes we complain, but there's things that will change things with a little bit of an effort. But we forgot how to teach our young kids how to do it. They're the ones that's in trouble. I'm going to let this guy quit playing his piano and give it to him. <laughs> Y'all know why I'm playing the piano this morning? 
Yeah. 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 Couldn't get, I couldn't get Brother Mike to play it. No. Penny says he can't even play a stereo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> I want to thank the Lord this morning. For those that did come, there were some that had some obligations they needed to, to fulfill this morning. But uh, they'll be back tonight. It, uh, but you know what? Uh, I was just thinking about something that I was told this week. Uh, there, most most young people have a telephone, or they have a thing that they use that's in screen on it. And I don't even know what to call them, but some kind of pad. But anyway, this guy was telling me, Brother Walls. I can put in your, I can put your number, your house number in, and I can look at you at home, I can pull you right up, and see you sitting right on the porch. Mm -hmm. right. He said, I do it all the time. He said, uh, uh, <laughs> what do they call them, iPods? Or? Yeah, iPods. iPods, okay. Anyway, I don't know about it, so th this is the one I got right here. And when it rings, I know how to say, hello. <laughs> and uh, that's all I know how to do. And I know how to click, turn it on and turn it off. That's all I know. Now, if it, uh, something happens to it, but this guy was telling me, he said, we do it all the time. He said, we, uh, even when we're on trips, said, uh, we're a thousand miles away from home. We can look right at our home, see what's going on. We can even see the dog laying on the porch, the cat. Now, you don't see what Brother Waltz, I, you know, whenever people were talking about these things, television, all that, Years when I was a child, I thought that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. <laughs> Picking up the telephone, talking to somebody, looking at them all at the same time. Why they ain't no such thing as that? How are they going to see me over that telephone line? <laughs> but it's happening. See, we, we are, the thing that you and I have been talked about is happening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, the Bible said that there would become perilous times, which means troublesome times. See, uh, Timothy tells us about this. And uh, when you and I begin to look at where we're at, we're in trouble sometimes. You know, there will be is becoming a notable sore. We've heard this all of our life. It's spoke of in the Bible. The automobile is spoke of in the Bible and all of these things. Zechariah tells about it. But whenever that you try to tell people, look, you need God in your life. We are in the winding up of time. And then they'll say, well, what do I need God in my life? Let me... Let me, the Bible said if it hadn't been for the shedding of the blood, we wouldn't have no remission for our sins. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Think about the blood. Yes. You know, when people have said to me a lot of times, they'll say, well, you're old, one of the old bloody preachers, ain't you? Well, I sure am. I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I believe if there had not been a shedding of the blood, I would not have the opportunity to come to Jesus, hallelujah, and be a part of the family of God, of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. I want you to know that I'm proud of my inheritance. Praise the Lord. I'm proud that God let me be in the his family. Amen. I'm proud of the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm a walls. Ain't you glad you're Mitchell? Ain't you glad that, hallelujah, that you're Stuart? And ain't you glad you're, you're you know, I mean, I, we're, we're proud of our names. Hallelujah. Maybe, oh, but Brother Walls, I'm sure that back in your, uh, somewhere back there, your granddaddy, great-granddaddy, the uncles or something like that, 
They probably stole horses and got hung and stuff like that. They may have. That don't have a thing to do with me. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. The thing that has to do with me, I repented of my sins. Yes. Praise the Lord and was forgiven by the grace of God. An unmerited favor that I didn't deserve. I was forgiven. Uh, hallelujah, my sins and filled with God's Holy Ghost. Uh, I in the family of God today. Uh, hallelujah. Not ashamed of the proud that I belong to Him. Praise the Lord. Don't make any difference what you call yourself. Hallelujah. It's what you have down inside of you. Amen. You may be the ugliest person. I used to tell the kids, I was always dead the kids, I said, I know the man. So cross out when he cried, the tears run down back his neck. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said he was a hunch over when he started in the house he run on the porch. <laughs> And they start to look at me and say, did you really know a person that way? I have to say, no, I'm joking with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen to me. It wouldn't make any difference. It would not make one bit of difference if there was a person like that. If the grace of God lived inside of him, God would love him just like he loved him. You see, the Bible said that man looked on the outward appearance, but God looks down in the heart. Praise the Lord. And when God looks down in the heart, he takes the sin and washes it away and throws it away and takes it out of our life and we are no more Hallelujah, he is, uh, I belong to the devil, but we belong to God and we're God's children. And God understands us. Well, I don't understand this one. I don't understand why this does that or somebody else does something else. You see, there's all kinds of people in the world. I know one time years ago I worked at Outwood in the shop over there. And I went a hard in. They, in our artation, whenever they told us, said, uh, now, if you are here and you learn one of these children to pick up a spoon and uh, lay it down, in a year you've done, you've accomplished something. I thought, why ain't nobody that dumb? Anybody, anybody pick up a spoon and lay it down, but that's not so. That's right. I found out there was those that you didn't, never did learn for years of training. They never did learn how to pick up a spoon and to lay it down. Hallelujah. You see, but but they were still, still God created yes. that person. Yes. Hallelujah. God loves what he creates. You know what he said? Hallelujah. He said whenever that he finished everything, he was pleased. Hallelujah. Then when he made man, and then he made woman, then he got dissatisfied. <laughs> but that's true. Now I'm not. I don't mean that smart. But uh, but when he once he once he accomplished man, and and had man in, he gave that man a job to do, and you know what happened? He listened to the woman that God had given him. Now you read this in the third chapter, you know, of Genesis. I ain't going too far into that today because they're all looking vain at me. Praise the Lord, I'm married to But anyway, y'all listen to what I'm saying. I heard that. Hallelujah. But God created man in his own image. That's right. And in his own likeness. That's right. But it pleased God. Yes. But God created man for a purpose. <clears throat> he said, replenish the earth, number one. But then God called man to be a witness for him. Yes. We
we are witnesses to God. We don't need to sit around and say, well, I don't believe in this and I don't believe in that. Hey, you're, you're going to talk to me five minutes. I'm going to tell you about something good God done. Amen. <clears throat> you say, but Brother Walt, God didn't do that many good things for me. Ain't nobody here that God hadn't done something good for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what he done? He's already done something good for you this morning. He woke you up this morning and sent you on your way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Praise the Lord. The love of God is what is in your heart that causes you to enjoy the blessings that God gave just for you. I enjoy the blessings of God. Praise the Lord. You know, when you look at God's creation and you see what God has done, and then you, you look at yourself. And God created you. One time just a little baby was born into the world. And that was you. And then when he created you and brought you in to the world, there was a purpose in your life from the day that God created you. Now you say, Brother Walls, hallelujah. Uh, but God didn't even know what he had. God knew what he had. You mind one day is as a thousand years with the Lord and a thousand years as one day with the Lord. And God knowed you when you were created. He had you, he hallelujah, had you paid from day one. Praise the Lord. And, and whenever that he looked at you and he showed you and you come to him and you give your life to him. God was pleased with you. And you know, that's why that David said, I've never saw the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Glory to God. We have a promise because we're in God's, we're in God's kingdom. We belong to God. Praise the Lord. You know, whenever you, when you begin to look around that we was talking about, uh, uh, Mickey was talking about food and and uh, growing a garden, all them things. The reason that a lot of people don't grow a garden is because they don't know how. It's just they don't want to work to it. Did you ever think about that? Too much work for it. But I tell you what, I I I don't have much of a place to grow a garden, but I've done got tomatoes blooming anyway. Hallelujah. And I'm going to have, I'm going to wonder when we're going to get right one of these days. And I'm going to stand out in front of the church and eat four all of you. But anyway, praise the Lord. Listen. Now, you know what I'm going to say? Hey, look at this tomato. That's God's creation. I bought it at the IGA. Yeah. Think about it. God loves everyone that's here today. Amen. You know what? Now I I, I want to I want to bring this point out. People down their self. Do you ever think about how people they down themselves? They well, I'm no good. I can I ain't good to nobody. I'm not good for nobody. Damn! Don't you let the devil tell you that. Amen. Quit letting the devil tell you that. Hallelujah! You're God's creation. And you're good for God, and you're good for Dan, and you're good for others around you. Hallelujah. You are Mr. Somebody. But Brother Balls, the devil come and jump on Brother Mitchell. He'd jump on me, anybody he can, that does something. Well, you made a mess out of him today. Hallelujah. Some of the greatest message I ever preached to. Since I've been a preacher, the devil told me you made a mess out of him today. And everybody in the house got blessed from it. Amen. Hallelujah. But don't let the devil tell you that you're nobody. You are somebody. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word of your testimony. Amen. That word that you have, you don't just have just what you say out of your mouth. It's what you back it up with. Praise the Lord. You know, dollars used to be backed up with gold. They used to have to have so much gold to back the dollars up. 
And uh, then the dollar was worth something. Now then it's uh, back up with pennies anymore. But anyway, hallelujah, coppers or whatever. But listen to what, <laughs> listen to what I'm saying. It spins anyway. But anyhow, the thing that I want you to think about. You are a somebody. But you owe that's being somebody. You owe that to somebody. And that's God. Praise the Lord. God brought you into this world. Created you. You were born. Hallelujah of a woman. But God saw you from the time you come in the world. God knew what he had, in your, had for you to do. You don't, you, know, oh, you don't just automatically fall into this. When I was five years old, my grandmother was an invalid. But she was a Holy Ghost filled woman. Her and my, and so my mother side the Johnson side of the family. And I remember as if it were today, I mean, I was only five years old. And because I can look back to the time called, or where, where we lived, why we, we, you know, was out of that, I lived there, moved there when I was about five years old. But she said to my brother and I, my brother four years older than I was, and she said, God's going to make a Holy Ghost filled preacher out of you two boys one of these days. And, uh, of course, we went over and, and to hear what she had to say. We was playing around the old fireplace and wondering what. She said, God said, both of you are going to speak in tongues just like your granddaddy did that's gone on to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. I never thought much about it, but it stayed with me all my life. And God brought me through car wreck after car wreck, through battles and sin and, you know, everything. And He brought me. And one day He stopped and said, now it's time for you to be somebody. You've been nothing long enough. See, and God took me and saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost. You see, God has something good in every life that's here. Some words you've been a blessing to somebody. And to see that you are so, they're going to come up and they're going to grow. Someday God will take a hold of your life. Hallelujah. I want to tell you all something. Cody, my grandson, making him spoil. I'm proud of him for what he does and what he stands for because he loves God. He's, he's, he's left his, he left the whole family and uh, it's hard to think he's gone in Colorado, several hundred miles away. But he's there for one purpose. And you've got to be you've got to be a preacher and you've got to have that calling in your own life before you understand it. Hallelujah. Then when you understand it, you say, I've had God to send me places and I say, Lord, I just don't want to go. I want to stay at home. I want to go ahead. Hallelujah. Won't you God, won't you let me stay at home? Won't you let me give me a job? Won't you let me work? Like everybody else, why don't you, hallelujah, just let me stay at home. But God said, no. There's a call down in Mississippi or Alabama or Louisiana somewhere that wants you. You, gotta, you can't understand it. Why? But God does. He's got a place for every one of us. He's got a place. Everybody's not a pastor. Every preacher's not a pastor. They, they don't want to be. I didn't want to be a pastor for many, many years. I started churches all over the country. But I still didn't want a pastor, but I wanted to start churches. And I wanted to see them, somebody else take them and go with them. A lot of them, they did. But listen to me. The gifts and the calling of God is without repentance. It don't, I don't have a doubt in my mind that Brother Mike Spears is a God-called evangelist. Hallelujah. 
I believe that with all my heart. Oh yeah. He can pasture. But he, he he's not there, boy, because he wants to be. He's there because <laughs> somebody drops it in his in his in his hands and and he has to do it. But God has a has a place for every one of us. Praise the Lord. You know what? I know I'm not a piano player, but I, I can do it if somebody else ain't there. I'm glad God taught me what little I do know that I can fill in if nobody else is there. Hallelujah. We'd been we'd been in that church class this morning if, if I had no little bit about it. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Because God loved me enough. He let me play about anything a little bit. Church listen to me. They ain't no nobody's here. Right. They are somebody's here. Kings of God and high priest. Hallelujah of the calling of God. You won't make me think that God called me and made me a nothing. But I believe God called me and made me a something. Amen. Yeah. And I believe He done the same thing with you. Hallelujah. Right. Geneva, you are somebody. Right. Hallelujah. Surely you are somebody. Right. Don't let the devil tell you you're nobody. Right. You are a somebody. I appreciate it. I'm glad I'm somebody, ain't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. What would I be <coughs> if I wouldn't went on my life like I started out? What, what, what would I, 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 I wouldn't be living today, but because somebody would, wouldn't have put up with my foolishness. But anyway, God saved me and let me live. Hallelujah to where I'm at today. And uh, what Brother Walls, well, you may die before the day's gone. You may too. Amen. You may have to come to my funeral or I may have to come to your funeral. I know people think, well, Brother Walt, it never will die. Uh, somebody, I seen somebody the other day and uh, they said, ain't you Brother Walt? Well, yeah, Brother Walt. I thought you did. <laughs> I, I said, I'm more dead than I was 20 years ago. I'm close to the... Well, I thought you did. Somebody told me you died. I said, no, I'm very much alive. Hallelujah. Don't care what they tell. I'm still walking around. How would you how would you like to to be Hallelujah? See, Ed here with Paul Ray Davis one time told a guy that down there worked with him. He said, Where's Officer Payne at? He was off sick and he said Paul Ray said, didn't you hear? He got killed <laughs> in a car accident. And they didn't bother and, to tell me. And he didn't bother to tell Ed. Ed come back to work and goes up and slaps this guy on the back. And said, black he man. said, the guy that turned around, he, he was a black guy, and he turned around and said, he turned white. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Jumped about 10 foot in there, and I got that to you. <laughs> <clears throat> Wanted to know, <laughs> what are you doing there? Well, I'll come back to work. <laughs> but Officer Davis said, you got killed in a car accident. But he said, no, I'm very much alive. That does make you feel funny, don't it? <laughs> but listen to me. God loves you. Amen. Now, everybody quit feeling sorry for yourself. I'm glad, I'm glad Sister Brenda is able to be back here Amen. Amen. this morning. Bless her heart. She'd been sick. God made her able to come back to church this morning. I appreciate that. I love to see people come in. Sister, I tell you what, Sister Geneva, I don't care what they say, you're going to get well. Amen. I don't care what the doctor said, don't care what the devil says, anything else, you're going to get well. Praise the Lord. What about you, Brother Walt? I'm already well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'll tell you one thing, Sister Wilma got a hold of me, and she wouldn't, and boy, let me tell you something, she prayed for me. I had a back problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said, I want you to pray for my back, and she just prayed and prayed and prayed, and I went to sleep, and she was still praying. And when I got up the next morning, I got out of bed, 
<laughs> My back been 100 percent better. Thank God. Thank God. She said, I can baby this thing here so when she gets ready to pray for you, she won't turn you loose. She'll just hang on like a bulldog. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know what? Then she comes in, oh, oh, my legs are about to kill me. I can't hardly get around. I can't hardly walk. Hallelujah. Okay. Boy, I started praying for her, and I prayed until the pain leaves her. Me and her, we pray for one another all the time. And God thanks you enough for being good boy. And he was us. Praise the Lord. So I can't, I can't let her die until after I do. Because I ain't got nobody to pray for my pain. Hallelujah. And <laughs> so she can't. Hallelujah. I can't die till after she does. So me and her just going to live and live and live and live and live. Well, I pray for my pain and I still have it. I know you still. You got one pain. You got to have it. Uh, hey, oh you're sure God. you're all blessed with pain. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> his fault. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad you come this morning. Be back tonight. Folks, listen to me. I may joke with you, but if we're going to heaven, we're going to have to be covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. And the word of our testimony is what's going to carry us through. I appreciate everybody that come and took part. We'll have others back.